Welcome, this is Nalta Explores number 18 on for us Mega Thursday because it's a very special day. Today we're going to launch digitally our album Internet of People um, composed by the artist Airtime. The special thing about this album is that we're going to play this album live on our event the 2nd of October and combine it with the content we're going to give you and that will be panel discussions. We'll have Michael Morton presenting about data-driven companies, Hans Timmerman, but most of all we have Andrew Keen as our keynote speaker and he is going to talk about how IoT and technology ties into our society. I spoke with Andrew last Friday and I asked him about himself his book, How to Fix the Future, and about our conference. So enjoy watching and download our music. Good afternoon, Andrew. Nice to have, ah. you. Nice to have you here on Skype. Um, to our Dutch audience, you're probably a bit new. So could you please uh, introduce yourself? Well, I hope I'm not that new. I've been to Holland many, many times. Some of this audience will have heard me spoke. Uh, I'm a Silicon Valley-based entrepreneur, uh, broadcaster, and writer. I uh, started a company called Audio Cafe, wrote books like Cult of the Amateur, and um, uh, The Internet is Not the Answer. My latest book is How to Fix the Future. And I speak often, at least once a month, sometimes more in Amsterdam and Holland in general. It's so cool that you're willing to join us on stage on the 2nd of October, uh, our Internet of Things uh, event. Um, I, I have to admit, I've not finished it yet, but I love it. Um, and we, bo we bought some, uh, some copies of it and we will share them with uh, at least a part of the audience. Excellent. Well, thank you. It is great. Um, but could you explain a little bit what the new book is all about? Well, the new book addresses the reality that the digital revolution has gone off the rails, that it's not promising or it's not delivering what it promised, more equality, more democracy, more civility. So having accepted those things, more and more people agree with this. I've been pointing this out for uh, several years now, but most people have come around to my position. I focus on solutions from countries like Estonia, new startups in Germany, you know, new regulation coming out of Brussels, uh, edu educational um, educational initiatives and innovation. So I'm focusing on solutions to the problems with the digital revolution. I thought it was quite positive, um, but I could never imagine that you would be a maybe. That, that's what I'm reading. You're a maybe, right? You mean a maybe as opposed to a no or a yes? Yeah, exactly. So it looks like you're right in the middle of the Don't people. I look like a maybe? Had a haircut and everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we're all maybes. I think 15 years ago when I started writing, I was a no and most people were yeses. Now I think we've sort of come together. I think more and more people acknowledge that we need to work on some of the aspects of the digital revolution. But anyone who's a no is, is a Luddite, is completely out of touch. The idea of going back to analog certainties is as absurd as going back to live in a cave and, 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 and use candlelight. It's just absurd. So I think we have to be maybes, and I think that's the most realistic and responsible attitude. I think I couldn't agree more. And then we have our event, the 2nd of October. It's about the Internet of Things. How does your story fit into that space? Well, I think the Internet of Things, which um, is the next big thing, or amongst the next big things on the horizon, is really critical. As inanimate objects become smart, as we have self-driving cars, smart homes, smart cities, maybe even smart bodies, smart furniture. Um, the issues that I raise in my book about privacy and monopolies become even more important. So the question is, should the Internet of Things revolution be regulated? How do we protect our privacy? How do we make sure that a tiny handful of companies don't dominate the entire economy? How can we stimulate more innovation for startup people? And how can we educate our kids to be ready for a world in which Everything around them will be watching them, 
and everything around them in some ways will be smarter than them. How are they going to work? How are they going to interact with these objects? So these are huge issues. Yeah. Whether you create the Internet of Things or AI um, or the, the smart tech revolution, doesn't really matter on your language. But we know what's on the horizon. This is inevitable. The question is, is it going to become really sort of salient in five or ten years, but certainly in 15 or 20 the world that we're looking at today will have dramatically changed. So I think the choice uh, of the Internet of Things for your conference is a wise one. And I hope that I'll be able to bring some wisdom of my own to your audience. I'm really looking forward to it and I appreciate the invitation. Thank you, Andrew, and I'm certain you will. So we have the, the technical perspective, we will have the business perspective and this humane, human society perspective as well. Um, really happy you're going to join us. Thank you for this interview. And um, yeah, see you soon. Yeah, I'll see you in a month. I'm very excited. Thank see you. you.